even as a child, I remember thinking, even when it was the 707, that it always struck me as kind of strange as a kid that the US president had this specially painted plane, you know, this, this pastel blue and white thing. I don't know, I've always found the Air Force One ridiculous. A lot of what I think about is to do with technology. Obviously, a lot of the technological focus in the visual arts goes into generating an image. Well, I mean, this piece is called There's a Hole in My Bucket. Um, there's a hole in the bucket. So we have Air Force One stuffed up inside this mop bucket um, with this hole with the lamp making this sparkling sunshine, you know. Um, and, you know, this cinematic moment of Air Force One, sort of, you know, our leadership, which everyone's fighting over right now, is who's going to be our next piece of leadership in this country, um, you know, sort of powering on to, you know, this important international destination, one could imagine, or whatever. I'm trying to get the ingenuity at a level where it's not too clever. You know, I mean, there is obviously pleasure in the making of these, and I enjoy making this, you know, sweet image of the jet flying through the sky. I mean, it's, it's very boyish. I mean, this is actually pretty, it, it's, it's ingenious, but it's also incredibly basic. It's just light and a camera and hang Air Force One upside down in a blue bucket, you know. It, it's inescapably attractive to me at the same level as it's inescapably ridiculous. I mean, I love that conflation. You know? Black is positive. Black is negative okay. on this one. Um, like black is normally on DC and negative, but you, but you know these things are aesthetic down to the wiring. So you know James here is helping me has to um, you know I have no standards. So all of a sudden I've decided that for whatever aesthetic reason is going on with the technological basis on this one that I want the white wires to be negative. Yeah, and these pieces I'm doing now I'm trying to integrate the sculpture into the narrative, the materials in the narrative that ends up being this image on the TV. I started it last December and I had a structure made out of these two tray tables. Using all found objects and bought things bought from these Bed Bath and Beyond and you know what have you type stores, hardware stores and so on. Not only do I generate this object which has a sculptural dialogue but you know the object everything is functioning in support of generating this on-screen image that I'm sort of just trying to clarify right now. You know, like I have these flags that I use to mess with and then I'll sit down and carefully make a much nicer one. I mean, I can adjust the fan and increase the sound, but you get the kind of idea. The image is simple, it's cinematic, it becomes readable as flag and landscape. You can look at it and realise it's generating this thing, it invokes curiosity, it's a little funny, it invokes humour, you know the materials it's made of, hopefully it invokes a little empathy, all these sorts of things I'm looking for to try and get the art viewer in this place where you know, maybe they go off and have um, a somewhat different read. I grew up in an area called Lake Macquarie which is an area only about 100 miles north of Sydney, but not an area that even Australians know that well. It's, it's the area of Australia's biggest regional city, which is Newcastle. So it's, you know, and everything that's um, provincial has a chip on its shoulder, if you like. But also being Australian leads to, maybe it's the, the criminal background or whatever, but culturally there is a kind of a, a distrust and a reverence of authority. Um. So this is a ride at PS1. It was part of the Great New York Show in 2005. Any viewer was welcome to get on this thing, you know, push the go button and, and take a little ride around the, um, the museum. There was an airplane in the sky, war imagery, there's a volcano. I was drawing on this idea of a contemporary um, grand tour. A young um, bourgeois fellow came of age and he went off to Italy on the grand tour. I think there was nine or eleven little scenes that it would stop at for a little period and then move on to the next one. The whole idea being to set up something that was essentially ridiculous. It had enough attraction that someone might want to do it, but enough silliness that there was really an absurdity to the fact that you would actually do it. Interrogating the art context quite specifically, I mean the Great New York show 
obviously had a certain excitement and everything that went with it. So this idea that um, yeah, people people come into the museum with a certain expectation, which I saw as a license to get away with something. into the cup where the camera is. So the camera is inside the cup in here. Um, now the cup has been smeared with some nice bits of uh, greasy hand sanitizer and that, you know, out of focus in the foreground is going to create this sort of mist look from foreground to middle distance. And this white plastic bag here on my Marquette, that just is what becomes the, um, the iceberg. Nothing like a bit of crinkled white plastic to read as an iceberg. I mean, intrinsically, I think it's about art viewing. Um, it's about the institution, about the cultural industry of, of what art is, what it does. Um, but it's kind of about interrogating that, not necessarily accepting it.